Hey y'all, hey, it's JJ Conway. Welcome to Building Wealth Together, where our goal is to help you walk in abundance and leave a legacy. It's Mindset Monday, where we take the best teachings on mindset, motivation, and leadership and apply them to your life. This helps you get past the past and grow forward into abundance. Let's get into it. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you back to Mindset Monday. Uh, We are in the middle of a series called Emotional Survival for High Stress Career Fields. This study is based on the book Emotional Survival for Law Enforcement, a guide for officers and their families by Dr. Kevin Gilmartin. For those of you who are new to this series, I came in contact with this series when I went to the three-week Shreveport Police Department's Citizens Academy. The Academy was eye-opening, y'all, and it really helps you understand what some of the dynamics are, the -the behind-the-scene dynamics of what's going on with all these social media posts and unrest and things that we're seeing in the news. If you'd like more information about the Police Academy and just how very, very eye-opening it was for me, I encourage you to go to Building Wealth Together. Dot com. Click on all courses and scroll down quite a bit until you find the People Like Me series. We kicked that off in June or July this this past summer when a lot of the unrest started. And it really explores some of the issues that we don't like to talk about. The reason I did that is not only because I am a person of color, but as a financial planner, it's important to address the issues because it's the issues that eat us that cause us to misbehave with money. All right. And when it comes to this series, the reason that I decided to launch this series is because I find so many of my clients are in high stress career fields. They may not be law enforcement or fire or EMS or military, but they are in incredibly stressed career fields. And some people are in experiencing high stress that aren't even in what you would call a career. Even entrepreneurship, parenthood, motherhood, being that sandwich generation between your parents needing care and your children needing care, all of these things place a significant amount of stress upon us, not to include the current climate of the world, okay? And so with the pandemic and the racial tensions and just everything, a lot of us are experiencing the symptoms of stress. And that's what really stood out to me. When I listened to these classes about the physiological impact of stress on law enforcement. I realized that we are experiencing the same symptoms of high stress. Stress plays a significant role in our ability to think, to rationalize, to comprehend, and to, I was about to say react, but what I really mean is have a gap in between what happens, the stimulus, and the reaction we take. I'm not sure what the word is for that gap, that moment that we have to make a decision, but far too many of us are in such high stress that we're not making decisions. We're not living our lives proactively. We're living our lives reactively. And my hope is that by going through this study, that you and I will, and all of us together, will begin to look at the impact of stress reduce the impact of stress on our lives and be able to live more fruitful and abundant lives. The last two weeks that we've been in this journey, we talked about the journey through law enforcement and what it's like going through the academy and being all excited and then getting out there on the beat or behind the desk or whatever it is, or whatever the role is that you play. And we drew parallels between law enforcement and other careers. Again, we're talking about high stress career fields in a, and, and sometimes we, we may experience that high stress and we're not really dealing with a career, but it's still the same impact, okay? So then last week we looked at the dual nature of this class. We looked at the officer survival and how officer survival is super important and must be a focus of training, but how it didn't need to be the only focus of training. And we drew a parallel on that for in our lives, the things that we have to do the responsibilities that we have, the way we earn our income, the way we take care of our family, the obligations that we have to all of the important people in our lives. Those are important things, but they shouldn't be the only thing because we also have an obligation to ourselves. And what we find is a lot of us do not prioritize our own selves. Now, this isn't a class that's going to tell you reduce stress by building in more hair appointments or spa appointments, okay? Those are good things, but that doesn't work for everyone, and it doesn't fix the underlying cause of stress. 
We'll talk a little bit more about that later uh, in the series. But just for today, I'll tell you one of the biggest things that I find in my financial clients. So these are people that come to me. You know, I find people who come to me because they want to do advanced strategic planning. That's one of my favorite categories to work with, but that's not the bulk of my clients. The bulk of my clients have hit themselves against the financial wall and they need help and they need it now. And what I find with those particular clients is that the number one behind the scenes cause of the money issues they're in is that they have not prioritized their future. Sometimes they're not even thinking strategically to even comprehend that it's time to think about the future and preserve ourselves today for the future or do something today that our future self will be thankful for. That's a huge difference between the way poor people and wealthy people think. The poor person is living in the here and now. How do I feel in this moment? What do I need to do in this moment? Where does my paycheck need to go in this moment? Whereas the person who has a little more wealth or who has a little bit more abundant relationships or who has a little bit more abundant health or who has a little bit more freedom of self-expression, right? Who has a little bit more spiritual growth, Those are the people who are no kidding looking strategically and thinking strategically. It's not just about the here and now. It's also about what am I going to do next month, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. And the more you begin to think strategically about your money and about your stress and about your health and about your relationships, the better decisions you make about those things right now. And right now, it's time for us to make the decision to prioritize our health, our longevity, our future generations, our future in general. And that's what I'm hoping this series will help us to do. So after we talked about the um, the changes and why officer survival needs to be important and why your and my survival needs to be important, but they don't need to be the only thing, Caring about our emotional survival and our abundance mindset needs to be important too. Then we looked at the changes and we brought out a quote from Jim Rohn that said, oh man, I don't even have the quote in front of me. Sorry, y'all. But we brought out a quote from, or we brought out a concept from Jim Rohn that says that success is the series of a bunch of small decisions made consistently over a long period of time. And that similarly, failure is the result of a series of small decisions made consistently over a long time. And so we looked at how we can begin to see the impact of stress. And we began to understand last week that this kind of stress that comes from being in what we call a high stress career field or a high stress environment comes from the daily attention or inattention to a series of small things done consistently over a long time. You know, if you stack one toothpick on top of another toothpick on top of another toothpick on top of another toothpick, and you do that every single day, you might think that that one toothpick today and that other toothpick tomorrow is not getting you very far. But if you were to consistently do that over 10 years, those toothpicks would reach higher than most of the buildings that you see day to day, at least in this town. I don't know where you're living. All right. So we got to understand that little tiny changes and little tiny of choices make a big difference in the end. And I'm here to help you change your financial future. Okay, so now we're going to move on to chapter five. And if you don't have the book or if you are a reader that would love to get your hands on the book, you can go to my podcast page and find a link to get you a copy of the book. Okay, the chapter five talks about hyper vigilance. And this was one that really, really grabbed me. Because we, we compound the small changes that take place over time when we're in a high stress environment. And we realize through watching the experience of our law enforcement in this book, how they're exposed every day to all these unknown events and that any one of them could be perfectly harmless or lethally dangerous. And most of us, unless you're in law enforcement, you're, you're not exposed to something that could be perfectly harmless or lethally dangerous. 
But I know for me, I was treating everything that way. And I know some of you know my story and some of you don't, but I've had a lot of crazy issues over the last couple of years from, you know, two car accidents within eight months of each other, you know, the second one radically changing my future of my health and my career and everything, then to being put in a dead end job and having all these false accusations and crazy stuff. I mean, it was just ridiculous, right? And for me, what it did was it made me very skittish. It made me skittish. It made me so skittish that I no longer trusted anybody. Even if someone was giving me a compliment or somebody was trying to help me, like legit trying to help me, I did not trust them because the situation could be perfectly harmless, but I was treating each situation like it was lethally dangerous. Okay. And so hypervigilance is often in these kinds of careers. It's like this necessary manner of viewing the world from a threat-based perspective. It, it, and I don't want, the reason I say necessary is because I don't want people to think that I'm saying that it's wrong to be hypervigilant, okay? Hypervigilance is the necessary manner of viewing the world from a threat-based perspective, having the mindset to see the events unfolding as potentially hazardous. I wish to God I would have seen, and I'm still not sure why the Holy Spirit didn't reveal it to me, that when my boss told me, go ahead and take the time off, that he was setting me up. I thought because I had out a text message that everything would be fine, it wasn't good enough, okay? And most of my career, I had been hypervigilant people kept trying to tell me, look, you want to be part of the team, but you don't trust anybody. You don't trust anybody. You know, at some point you have to be able to trust your team. And I feel like, oh my goodness, that one time I let my guard down, all this other stuff happened. And I can imagine that feeling is intensified by law enforcement because when I was at that Citizens Police Academy, y'all, they had me in that cop car and we pulled somebody over. Uh, it was staged, but we pulled, we pulled over the, the person who had run the red light. And I mean, I remember feeling all the feels y'all, all the hypervigilance I had my hand and you don't even realize you're doing it right. Like I had my hand on that weapon, like as if this guy was going to shoot me at any moment. And so we have to understand that hypervigilance isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's what keeps you alive. And when you're in a situation where people have been coming after you, you know, especially for minorities who are trying to, trying to make it in a career that is very hostile to them. When women are trying to make it into a career that's very hostile to them. Any person, you feel in any protected category of people who are trying to make it in an environment that's hostile to them, you almost have to be hypervigilant in order to succeed. The problem is the toll that it takes on you. There's a toll. It keeps you alive keeps you alive, but there are consequences. There are consequences to living in a hypervigilant state day in and day out. Now, most people experience this at a time and then it goes back down, right? You're walking down an unknown dark street in a bad neighborhood at night, okay? You might experience some hypervigilance, all right? There's a lot of unknowns there. You might start asking if you're in harm's way. You know, is that person who's approaching a potential assailant, right? Is that group of men following me? What is that sound behind me? Those are all safe questions to ask. You, you want to come home. And the police officer that wants to come home at the end of the day is going to be in that state while they're on duty. Okay? The thing is, we've got to understand that while hypervigilance is what lets the police officer see the threat or risk before it takes its toll, there's also a toll on the police officer, him or herself, because of this. So on one hand, it protects you from the external threat, but what's happening to you internally? And so we want to look, take a little bit of a look at the biology of hypervigilance. And again, this book was written for law enforcement, but I find that many of my high-performing clients, many of my money-struggling clients, many of my Clients in general have been experiencing high levels of stress for so long that I think you need to learn about these things too. In fact, this next section of the book where he starts to talk about the biological effect of hypervigilance, it echoes what we've talked about in the self-image rising class. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of that class before, you can go out to buildingwealthtogether.com and take a click on it. It's a pink class that says self-image rising. The premise of the class is that we increase our net worth when we increase our self-worth and that if you want to have more out of life, we have to be more in life. And in order to be more in life, we have to be more inside. And, and the whole 
the whole fundamental thing that we're learning to do in that class is we're learning to change how we think. We're learning how the brain works and how our thinking works. We're learning how to think. So I don't teach you what to think, but I teach you how to think so that you can come up with the life that you want to live and you can give your, use your God-given mental faculties to create the life. We are creative beings just like our creator. We are made in his image and you have the ability to change your life. Okay. And so we talk about the impact uh, in that class. We talk at great length about the autonomic nervous system. We talk about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, and we talk about how you've got the flight or fight and you've the rest of digest, right? And so again, if, if this is something that's really speaking to you, you want to go get this self-image rising class. Uh, there's a, a look, but going back to what Dr. Gil Martin is writing here in his book, he talks about the RAS. That's another thing I've talked a lot about the reticular activating system. Your brain has a lot going on. Your brain takes in all of the inputs, all the inputs, all of the sights, sounds, colors, all of that gets registered in your brain, whether or not you realize it. It's like a million pieces of information coming into your brain every given day, but your conscious mind can only handle so much. The RAS acts as a filter and it determines the level of attention you're giving to any level of details at any given time. And so on the self-image rising class, we talk about the RAS and how if we're having a mopey day or a bad day and we're focused on, oh, this is a horrible day, then all the information the RAS allows to filter up to our conscious brain is going to reinforce that concept. Whereas if we focus on the good and the positive aspects of the day, then that shifts what energy, I mean, that shifts what inputs the RAS allows to bubble up into our conscious brain. This is why positive thinking has been so powerful. But the class goes deeper than just positive thinking because positive thinking doesn't last but so long if you don't do the work to change the subconscious programming going on in the background. Because I can put on a smile on my face and I can go out my day chirpy and people can actually be nicer to me in the store than when I don't have a smile on my face. But that doesn't change the underlying self-belief that something's wrong with me. I have to do the work to change the underlying self-belief that something's wrong with me before I change the vibration, the energy, the perception that I'm putting out. And when I put out a different vibration, you know, a good vibe, you get a good vibe from somebody or a bad vibe from somebody. When I put out different energy, I get different results back. Okay. I, I have bit, bit different behavior and different results. And so what he's saying here is, um, when, when the normal person walking down the deep, uh, the dark, the dark, unfamiliar street in an unfamiliar town, they're hypervigilant, everything, um, you know, they have a increased peripheral vision, improved hearing, faster reaction times, increased blood sugar, elevated heart rate. You know, this is a, you get an extra set of energy and that's to help you overcome any threats, right? This is, this is all biological. Okay. This isn't, this isn't woo woo stuff here. This is all biological. So when you're operating in that hypervigilant mode, it, it, it allows you to operate above the normal range of risk that we take on every day, right? And so, and so after it's over, the civilian drops back down to the normal level of risk, right? But the on-duty officer is above that level of risk all the time. We've got to understand that this state of alert interaction with the environment at mild to moderate levels, it's not unpleasant to experience physically because it's like you're getting a boost, and this is where this really began to speak to me, okay? I understand that for any of you who are, who are listening that are law enforcement, I am not trying to equate entrepreneurship with what you do every day, okay? Even being in the military, I realized I couldn't have hacked it as a, as a cop. When I went through that citizen's police training, I realized that my military training did not prepare me for the realities day in and day out. It's one thing to go to the desert for six months, but when I come home, I feel relatively safe. And so th this, this heightened sense of awareness, it's, it's, it's like you're getting this boost and you almost feel supernatural, right? And that's kind of how some of us workaholic types feel when we're getting stuff done. That's why this really stuck to me because I said, oh my goodness, I absolutely resemble this, this remark, you know? You know, people say cops know what it feels like to be a cop. Nobody else really understands. Everybody else is just on the outside looking in, right? Well, when you're a growth-oriented entrepreneur, you feel the same way. When you are a, in whatever career field you're in, you feel the same way. So there's an appeal. 
You feel alive. You feel high energy. You feel quick thinking. It makes you, it makes everything pop more. The reds are redder and the blues are bluer, right? It's like you have front row seats to the greatest show on earth, okay? It is something that we don't really see as much in other career fields, but I'm hoping I'm painting enough of a picture for you to understand that many of us are living with elevated stress responses and it flies under the radar because we don't realize that anything is wrong, but something is wrong. And we know something's wrong because of what happens when you come home. See, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When the officer goes off duty, that sympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system, which controls the on-duty reactions, right? This whole thing, that flight and flight, it gives way to the parasympathetic side. That's your rest and digest from our self-image class. That's your rest and digest. So this person who was at work, alert, alive, engaged, quick thinking, right? Now changes into a detached, withdrawn, tired, and apathetic individual. Whoa. It's a balancing act. The body does a balancing act. There's two issues here. One, you need to give yourself enough time to restore balance. But two, if you don't pay attention to this phenomenon, then when you come home, you're not the same person that your spouse or your family came to know the love. The same person who socially engages other individuals and practices alert and alive officer safety skills and is really large and in charge on duty can have trouble responding to a normal conversation at home. You know what spouses of people like this say? She's different now that she's a cop. He never talks anymore. He comes home, sits in front of the TV, and tunes out the world. She won't even answer the telephone. One of the biggest side effects of all this is anger. This is where it really hit home for me because I realized with everything that had happened to me over the last couple of years, I had been hypervigilant when it came to driving because of these two car accidents. I had been hypervigilant at work because of the false accusations and all the stuff that I had to go through, which was a result of the decreased cognitive ability because of the second car accident, right? I wasn't a cop, but I was living in that, in that world. And I didn't even see all of this until I've come out of it. And I can look back at the reports where my family reported to the doctors how angry I was. All of these things that I just never would have associated with me. But it was because of the hypervigilance that I was experiencing at work. And I think if you would sit down and really truly analyze your life, I think many of you would find that you yourself are on what Dr. Gil Martin calls the hypervigilance biological roller coaster. What is the hypervigilance roller coaster? So we talked about when you're on duty and how you're on this alert. Wait, I'm sorry, y'all. I keep saying it like it's us, but this is really a book for law enforcement. And I feel like I'm offending law enforcement folks, right? I don't want to offend anybody because what most of us as entrepreneurs or moms or other things that we do, it's not the same as what cops do. And I don't ever want to imply that, but it's the same effect. It's the same effect on our life. And that's what, I guess that's really what I want to get at. If I could sum this up, it's far too many of us are living with these effects in our lives, but we're actually not dealing with life or death. And my hope is that by highlighting these concepts for you, that you will see yourself in them and begin to take actions to reduce the amount of stress. It will actually help you reduce the spending that leads to money problems. It will also help you attract more abundance because people attract more abundance when they give out more abundant energy. And we don't give out abundant energy when we are constantly in states of hypervigilance or when we're on the downside of the hypervigilance recovery roller coaster and we're this apathetic, tired, withdrawn, and bitter and angry person. The hypervigilance recovery period is very interesting because the the chart that Dr. Gilmartin brings out is for your 8 to 10 to 12 hours that you're on duty, you actually need 18 to 24 hours to recover. How many of us actually recover from the stresses of our lives? How many of us give ourselves enough time to recover from stresses? How many of us are experiencing a day-to-day cycle of high elevation at work followed by detachment, social isolation, and exhaustion at home? That's the hypervigilance biological roller coaster. And the worst part about it is the things that we do to address this in our lives are usually not effective. One of the biggest things that we do is zone out 
you know, watching TV, on the computer, reading the newspaper. Well, I'm just going to take a nap or I'm just thinking about something like just really no kidding zoning out. But if they asked you what you were thinking about, you were like nothing. I myself have fallen prey to this and it's made me realize, hey, something's not right. I need to take care of whatever's going on. Okay. So this is when you're going to find, now you know you're in this situation when your spouse starts asking why you don't talk anymore, why you don't do anything anymore, why we don't go out anymore. Why don't you ever want to come home anymore? Because remember, when you're in this hypervigilant state, you just want to be out there doing more of it. And you don't realize that you need to go home and you need to get some decompression. What we're going to do when we get back next week is we're going to actually talk about a few more symptoms of the hypervigilance biological roller coaster to help you identify whether or not you yourself are on this roller coaster. And then we're going to go into some things that you can do about it. We're going to talk about the long-term effect of this hypervigilance, and then we're going to talk about what you can actually do about it. Thankful that you guys have been with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast, and I appreciate your patience while we're moving and while I'm retiring from the military and all this stuff because it's been difficult to get things edited and put together. I, I normally want to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to improve my professionalism and all that stuff. And it really means a lot to me that you guys are hanging with me in this time. I, I hope that these things are a blessing to you. If you have a question that you would like to ask, make sure you click the teal button that says Ask JJ. And you can either ask a question by scheduling an appointment or you can actually fill out a form. It gives you all kinds of options. All right. Y'all take care and be blessed. Love the podcast? Be sure to like, subscribe, and forward to three friends. You can ask a question or take a life-changing class at buildingwealthtogether.com. Now, go walk in abundance and leave a legacy.